I'm going to go over what you need to do for exercise 32. So this is uh, pretty similar to exercise 31, but we're looking at dependent samples tests here. So we have our data in this section called data for additional computation. And I've gone ahead and prepared that as an Excel and SPSS file for you. So if you're using one of those programs, you can just pull that data and use that. Number one, you need to tell us if the data meet the assumptions for a paired samples t-test. So we went over those in lecture and it's also in the book. So what you can do here is just list the assumption, yes or no, is it met? Assumption, yes or no, is it met? And so on. Number two, um, it wants us to draw the frequency distribution. And I really want you to do these with some sort of program, not by hand. Even if it's an online program, that's okay. But you need to know how to create some sort of computer generated frequency distribution. So let's go ahead and start with that. We want to do frequency distributions and look at the shapes of the distributions. So we'll go ahead and do descriptive statistics and create those graphs in Excel. So let me go ahead and go to Excel and the file that I've created for you, I'm going to make it a little smaller so that you can see this. There's two tabs at the bottom. One says descriptives and one says frequencies. I'll just separate this way to make it a little easier to work with. So I'm going to do my descriptive statistics on this tab. And I'm going to do that first for my baseline scores and then for my post-test scores. So I'm going to go up to the data tab, click data analysis, descriptive statistics, OK. I'm going to tell it where my input range is for this. And I, I couldn't see it really well, so I went a little too far. So let me change that. My data is grouped by column, so that's good. I did select those labels, so if you do, make sure you check that. And I want my output range to be right here underneath the table. And what I'm going to do to this is I'm not going to select that last variable just so that my results will be a little different from yours so that you can't just uh, copy what I'm doing you need to do it for yourself and then let me check the summary statistics box here that's going to give me the table that I want I'll click OK and I get this table which tells me a lot of my descriptive information here and I'm gonna go and do the same thing for my um, post scores so I just need to change this input range. And again, I'm not selecting that last value. So mine will look a little different. And I need to change the output range to be here. Otherwise, it'll overwrite the table I already have. Uh, this is checked, which is good. And summary statistics is checked. So I'll click OK. And here I have my scores for post-test distress. So this is my comparison, and what I would do is go ahead and just copy these and paste both of these. I could probably just do this all together like this, either into this question or into the next question where it asks about the means. Either one of those, go ahead and just paste those results, and I'll see that you ran that test and that you got that information. And we also need to do our frequency distribution. So let's go to the frequencies tab. And what I've done is just summarize the data for you. Now I have all my raw data points here. I would use this if I wanted to use the tool pack and I would need to tell it how to group the data. I find it a little easier to use the insert charts function. So I've gone ahead and grouped the data for you here. And I just need to create a distribution for both variables because the question actually does ask about the frequency distributions of the two variables. So let me select the data for the first variable. And I just chose groupings that seem to make sense to me. If your groupings are different, that's okay. Just double check your total here and make sure it adds up to the number of observations that you should have to make sure that you have the right number there. So I've selected that data, so I'll go up here to insert a chart, and I'm going to do the clustered column chart. And what I'm going to do with my data is actually um, not select. Well, you know, I will select it. I'll just make my color a little off so that it's not going to look the same as yours. 
So I'll do OK, and it puts in this chart for me. And I'll need to change my labels here, but first I'm going to change my color so that it's not going to look exactly the same as what yours looks like. You can change yours to another color if you want to. But I'm going to go ahead and change mine like this. So don't make yours the same as mine. And then I'm going to do add chart element. I'm going to add my titles here. And this is going to be, I need to look back at my data and see how this was measured. So this is a score on an affective distress. So let me put that in here. This is my affective distress score. And let me add a title on the vertical. And this is going to be frequency. And then I need to change my overall chart title. And my overall chart title is going to be the baseline scores for affective distress. So something like this that describes accurately what was done. So that's my first uh, frequency distribution. And then I just need to do the same thing for my post-test data. So I'm going to come up here, insert, and I'm going to do that clustered column chart. And then again, before I change my labels, I'm going to change the fill. This one I will make a little different color so that we can see these are different, different graphs. So now I'll add my titles to it. And this is my frequency. Should be getting pretty good at adding titles to our charts by now. And this is my affective distress score. And then let me change this overall title. I didn't need to go add title because it was already there. I just need to click into it to edit. So this is my post test or po let's say post uh, treatment affective distress. Let me let me say the scores for just so that the title is similar. So there's my two charts. So I just need to copy these and paste these into that Word document. So here's the distribution. It changes my color a little bit when I put it in here. It's okay. So let me get both of those and copy them over. Oh, that made that an interesting color. Okay, so make these similar sizes. So there's my two charts. I wanted to show you quickly how you could also do this with an online program. So let me highlight my data here. So if I was using an online program, I just search frequency distribution maker. And you could search histogram maker or something else. But here's one of the results. And I'll copy my data in and click generate. And it's going to make this distribution for me. It decided how to group the data. If I'm OK with that, I can just copy this and paste it. Let me see if it'll let me copy it. Copy image. And then I can paste that into my Word document. If it's not working to paste it that way, let me see. I can probably save this as an image and then insert it. So I'll save this as an image and then insert it into my document. Or I could do a screenshot um, or use that sniping tool to basically just capture this part of the screen. And go ahead and put that in your Word document. If you use an online program, it's, it's OK. If I want to edit it here, I can change the number of intervals that it has or the lowest value. If I want the lowest value to be like 0, then I'll just edit my histogram. So an online program is OK, but I do want you to use a program for this. The next thing this question wants me to answer is, what is the result of the Shapiro-Wilkes test? So if you use SPSS, go ahead and run that test. If you don't, 
just talk about the shape of the distribution a little bit. Is it skewed left? Is it skewed right? And don't look at them relative to each other. Look at within each. And so I can come to my descriptive statistics and I can look at my skewness and kurtosis. Remember, I didn't select that last value, so these answers will be a little different for you. So I can just look at these skewness and kurtosis results and just interpret those according to the guidelines that we have from class. And then the next thing for this question, number three, is what are the means for the baseline and post-treatment affective distress scores? So it wants to know the means for each of the groups. And I ran this information, so I have the means for the two groups right here, except yours will be a little different. So those are the means. If you put this chart in here, you don't need to type anything else. Just put that chart there. What's the paired samples t-test value? So I need to actually come in here and run my t-test. So let me go ahead and do that on the same page as my descriptives. I go up to data, go over to data analysis, and go down to the p-test paired to sample for means, and click OK. This is the test that I'm going to use for dependent samples. And remember, it's a dependent sample when we have pre- and post-test information. It's the same people at different time points. So I'm going to tell it where variable 1 is located, and that's going to be here. And then I'm going to tell it where variable 2 is located, and that's going to be here. I did select those labels, and I'm okay with the 0 0.05 level of significance, so we'll leave that. And I want to change my output range to be somewhere next to where I'm already working. If you're wondering about this hypothesized mean difference box, we just go ahead and leave that blank. Most of the time we'll leave that blank. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm not going to select that last value, so my results will be slightly different from yours. And then click OK once you've double-checked all the settings. And I get my t-test results here. Remember, mine are going to look a little different. I only have nine observations. You should have two. I mean 10, sorry, you should have 10. And let me go ahead and just copy this and just paste this right into the Word document where you're working. And so I'm looking for that t-test value, which is right here, that t-stat value. And then if you pasted this in, um, you don't need to list it, just put it there or just highlight it or something. I know that you know where to look at for that. And then you need to say if this test is significant at the 0 0.05 level. So we're going to look at our p-value, and you need to decide if this is a one-tail or two-tail test. Are we just looking for a difference between the groups, or are you looking for that difference, difference to be one direction or the other direction? So look at the relevant p-value for that to determine the significance. We could use the critical value also, and then in that case, we would compare this t stat value to the critical value. Uh, but most of the time, we're just going to use the p-value. It's a little bit more intuitive. So the number six says, if using SPSS, what's the likelihood of obtaining a t-test value as extreme or as close to the one that was observed if the null hypothesis is true? And this is my definition of my p-value. So it's just asking me what that p-value is. If my p-value tells me the probability of getting a result as extreme to what we observed, if there's really no difference between the two groups. So just list that p-value for either the one tail or two tail, whichever you decided you're using here. Number seven, on average, did the effective distress scores improve or deteriorate over time? So we're looking at the difference between the pre-test and post-test, that baseline um, and the post. So you can look at the mean to see if they improved. You can look at the shape of distribution. In the Excel file, I also have a variable called difference. So this is the difference between those and see if that's going down or going up. And uh, mostly, it looks like the scores mostly did go down, but you want to do some interpretation on that here. Number eight, write your interpretation of results as you would in a journal. 
So we want to write what we did here, what type of test we did, and what the results were that we saw. So we are making a conclusion, are we rejecting or not rejecting the null hypothesis? And then you can give that shorthand where you see it written something like uh, T, and then we would have, it's just lowercase t, and then we would have down below our degrees of freedom written like this. And then we would have that T value written here, whatever that is, and then what our P value is equal to. So this would be kind of that shorthand notation that we would see in journal articles. So give me a few sentences here about that. And number nine, what did the results indicate regarding the impact of rehabilitation on emotional distress levels? So interpret the t-test results and whether or not this was significant. And are we seeing that there is a significant difference in the t-test or uh, in the results for distress scores based on this program? So what's the impact of the program on distress levels? Relate back to that original hypothesis. Do we have enough evidence to conclude that there's a difference or that the program makes an impact, yes or no? And always specify what our significance level is here. So give me a few sentences about your overall conclusion about whether the program's effective. Number 10, what are the weaknesses of the design in this example? So what are some of the uh, problems maybe with the t-test, with dependent samples design? Also, maybe sample size or the demographics of the participants. Overall, what are some of the weaknesses of, of this study and this design? So this requires you to interpret that a little bit based on what we've learned. And then when you're done with this, come up to the top and remember to save this as a new file and go ahead and put your last name in there and we'll just put fake last name in there, but just put a last name in there and save as so that I can keep track of whose file is whose and we don't have a whole bunch of files with the same name.